dare to play. I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That'll tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. All right, Nancy. Hello, friends. What's up? Welcome back to Yen Truck Gaming. Thank you guys for stopping by. I appreciate it. Today we're finally doing it. We're finally starting our Nancy Drew series. This will be game number one, Secrets Can Kill. I believe this game came out in the late 90s if I remember right, so I'm pretty sure the graphics are going to be on point. Nevertheless, this should still be a good time. I'm really excited to start. I forget how many games there are. There's probably close to 40 of these games that have come out, so this is game number one. Let's, uh, let's do what Nancy said here and figure out how to play this game. How to Be a Detective by Nancy Drew. What's new? In this game, you'll also have a cell phone with lots of features, phone, camera, and settings. Each mode can be accessed by selecting its icon from the main menu. Phone mode stores all the numbers you'll need to know. Bring up the correct contact or dial in the number yourself and press call. Camera mode allows you to take and view photos. When in camera mode, you can zoom in and pan before taking the picture. Click on View Photos to see your saved photos. You'll be downloading photos later from the View Photos mode. And the Settings menu allows you to personalize the look of your phone by choosing one of the options in the drop-down. Okay, so let's look at moving to around. To get from one place to another in the game, just move your cursor around on the screen and click when an arrow pointing in the direction you want to go appears. An arrow pointing forward allows you to go forward, while a back arrow allows you to step back. Sometimes up and down arrows are available, too. Give it a try. Find the forward arrow and check out Mr. Woogle Woggle. He's my teddy bear. When you want to turn around, move your cursor to the bottom of the screen until it turns into an arrow that looks like a U-turn or back arrow, and click. Each I always use my magnifying glass to scan my surroundings for clues. When it turns red, I know I'm onto something. When your magnifying glass turns into a question mark, you can talk to someone. When it becomes a hand, you can use it to open and close things, pick up objects, and move things around. To see how this works, move your mouse over this scene until the magnifying glass turns red. Then click to zoom in. See how the magnifying glass turned into a hand when you rolled it over the key? That means you can pick it up. When you click on an object with the hand cursor, that object gets added to your inventory. To see what's in your inventory, just click on the inventory icon at the bottom of the screen. To use an item that's in your inventory, just click on it. In fact, try clicking on the key. See how the cursor turned into the item you clicked on? Use the key to click on the lock on my suitcase, and you'll see how to return an object to your inventory. Just click on the inventory icon, then click on the open inventory box, and the object will go back into storage. You can close your inventory by clicking on the square in the upper right-hand corner, by clicking on the inventory icon, or by clicking on another icon. I keep reminders to myself in my journal. Click on the notebook icon at the bottom left of the screen, and you'll see what I mean. I try to keep my notes tidy by putting them into categories. Just click on a category and you'll see all the entries on that topic I've made up to that point in the game. Click on the clipboard icon and if you're a junior detective, you'll see a list of what I need to do. Organized person that I am, once I've done something, I check it off. Okay.
Check. Questioning suspects is something all detectives need to know how to do. In the game, to get people to talk to you, all you have to do is click on them. Let's say I've clicked on Mr. Wogglewoggle here. Our conversation will appear in the text box with his words in yellow and my responses in blue. Click on a response and see what your suspect says next. If there are a lot of words in the text box, use the scroll bar to move the text up and down so you can read along. Excuse me, giant human person, but you seem to be pretty nosy, especially for someone who hardly even has a nose. I mean, compared to mine. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Wogglewoggle, but I'm not nosy. I'm just very curious. Before you can start playing, you need to decide whether to play as a junior or senior detective. If you choose junior detective, you'll get more hints than you will if you're a senior detective, and the puzzles will be a little easier. When you're ready to start playing, just click on the plane tickets and hang on to your hat. Found a quarter. Okay, let's read the case file. Current assignment, a student named Jake Rogers was killed at the local high school last week. An undercover detective by the name of Beach asked Aunt Eloise if I could go undercover to investigate the murder. I'm posing as a new student to see what the other kids may know about Jake and his untimely end. Is that it? Um, all right, I guess we just hit the plane ticket and go, right? This is my first time playing, so I'm going to go with Junior this time. I probably could do Senior, but... Dear Dad, who would have dreamed taking a vacation to visit Aunt Eloise in Florida would result in another case? Seems a student named Jake Rogers was murdered at the high school last week. And an undercover police detective wants me to pose as a student to search for any leads at the school. So, it's undercover I go. I'm calling this case, Secrets Can Kill. Love, Nancy. <laughs> She's so happy about it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, take a look around at these things here. All these places we can go. Let's look at this. Nancy, I had to close the school library early today, but if you need to do any research for your case, the key to the library is in the safe. Remember, do not enter in a wrong combination. Be careful, Aunt Eloise. Okay. Thanks, Aunt Eloise. Can we open drawers? Yay! Oh, Roscoe Del Mar University and the Sigma Phi Kappa Delta Sorority cordially invite you to attend the 25th Annual Sigma Phi Kappa Delta Sorority Reunion, Saturday the 23rd. The Emerald Crest Ballroom, rest, is, that, is that a P or an R? I can't, I can't tell. Pasco Del Mar Country Club, Pasco Del Mar, Florida. Round Robin Golf Tournament starts at... 3.30, reception and dinner at 7 o'clock, dessert, dancing immediately following. Okay. Calculator. Can we open these other drawers? No. All right. I guess let's go back here. Safe. Oh. I don't even know what the safe is yet, do I? Oh, yeah, I do. It was on that letter. Hang on. Um, keep going. It was on this. 6 OKS -OK kind of thing. 6 OKS. 6 OKS. Alright. Which my 
key. I'm gonna go in my inventory. Good. Let's have my case file. Okay. Anything else in here that I can look at or take? Oh, it's a puzzle. Puzzle number one complete. School computer login. Eloise Drew, password Owise Elder. Alright, stick that in my inventory, please. Wait. Oh, some of these things can't be put into your inventory? Well, what are we gonna do about that? How did you uh, do camera mode again? Like, can I take a screenshot of this? Haven't done that. That's done. Okay. Can't check that off yet. Let's see if Aunt Eloise sent me a note. Okay, so we got a couple of those. Camera. Yes. Awesome. else back there. Alright, it looks like that's it for here. Okay, what's in this room? Reminders, talk to Jake about the library books out of order. Call Nancy to get flight number. Call Jackie about Spanish schools. Okay. Not sure why I would need that. That's just Eloise. Doesn't seem to be anything else up there. We look at this one. Nope. on the couch. Books. We actually get to read a story? The Haunted Ghost Bridge. Strange things have happened on this bridge. Some people have reported hearing screams and cries from below the span. Others have reported ghostly figures looming at the end, and even others have felt a cold tingling sensation throughout their body when crossing. No one is certain about the origin of these sightings, but the first documented case of spectral phenomenon occurred around the turn of the last century when a troop of Girl Scouts camped out here. All returned with their hair turned white. None of the frightened campers spoke a word until a year later. A year! At first the girls just babbled incoherently or screamed or laughed. A psychiatrist specializing in traumatic experiences was asked to examine the girls, but the girls would only say one phrase, follow the X to the spot below. Creepy. All right. Thought I saw something up here for a second. Maybe not. 
Do we look over here? Not really. Oh, look at this trunk. Ooh. Found a quarter. Found another quarter. I guess those are my hints if I need them. Is that really all that's in here? Hmm. Okay. Twas a treasure chest. Are these the books that are out of order? Found a key to the lounge. Oh, TV. Don't have anything to put in there yet, I don't believe. Got a couple of keys though. Supposed to read this? During a trip with Maxine, Maggie learned an old hiker's trick. Are Lena and Maggie coming to tea? inquired Carrie. No, they've gone to see the bandit's treasure at the Land O'Lakes Theater, replied Anya. Brady Armstrong is playing the lead. Ooh, I once visited Brady's restaurant in Napa, California, squealed Renate. It's called Mama Lonnie's. It was magnificent. I ate there, said Carrie, and got sick on a jellyfish sandwich. Ah ha ha ha, Bob whinnied. Oh, offered Renate, you should have tried the dog's eye. It was Robin Hood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in that neighborhood, joked Carrie. Everyone laughed. I rarely dine out, complained Anya, only once in a blue moon. Stifling a yawn, Renate put down her glam glam magazine. When are we going to return to the big island? Mike stood up and glared at Renate. Fish. Pish, pish. You know I'll never go back there. Oh, don't be such a baby, scolded Renate. Mike is afraid to go back because he got bit by a spider there, she explained to the other guests. He went to the ER and was bill... He went to the ER and the bill was huge because his copay is so much. Facts. My dad always wants to preach and complain about high insurance costs, muttered Lucas. You know... I always wanted to be an astronaut, Carrie interrupted. Did you hear that Daryl is going to the Air Force Academy? Is he? Asked Renee, offering a plate of cutlets to her guest. Good book, good book. All right, looks like we've kind of glanced at everything there. Can we not go in here? Is it locked? It appears to be locked. Let's go to the school. Hello? Nancy Drew, Detective Beach here. How are you? Good. Good. And yourself? Frustrated, Nancy. I need some leads and you're my man. Uh, well, woman, teen, student, whatever. I'll be at Maxine's diner. Come see me when you found out anything. All contact should be through me. Can do. So what's our cover? Our what? Um, our cover. Who should I say you are if anyone sees us and asks? Oh, right. Uh, I'll be your uncle. Uncle Steve. I gotta go now. If you need anything else, come see me at Maxine's. I'm wearing glasses and a green striped shirt. All right, let's go see Uncle Steve. The games. Welcome to Maxine's. I'm Daryl Gray. I don't think I've seen you here before. My name's Nancy Drew. I just moved down here. Then you'll be attending Paseo Del Mar High. I'm your student council president. If there's anything you need, just let me know. Thanks. I might just take you up on that offer. So, what can I do for you? Tell me about the, the high school. Tell me about Paseo Del Mar High. It's a great school. Good teachers, nice students, lots of after-school activities. It's just too bad what happened. I mean, I know what, what happened, happened, but tell me. One of the students was murdered in the school last week. 
Ooh. Let's say what happened. What happened? Someone beat up this guy, Jake Rogers, and then threw him down a flight of stairs. He worked here, but I didn't really know him. He kept mainly to himself. I mean, all of these, since we told him that we just moved here, all of these questions of who did it, who died, that really doesn't make sense because we technically don't know anybody, but we'll ask anyway. Who did it? No one knows, and the police are keeping pretty clammed up about it. But my resources say they're calling in some special detective, maybe even the FBI. It's me. Did this Jake guy have any enemies? Sure, doesn't everyone? Hmm, fair. Is that it? Are we done talking now? I should get back to work. Nice meeting you, Nancy. See you later. See you later. Nice talking later. to you. Nice talking to you, Daryl. Uncle Steve? Uncle Steve! Nancy! <laughs> Why, I haven't seen you since... Uh, uh, for a long time. <laughs> How's your... Aunt. Aunt Eloise. Oh, he's a bad actor. Oh, she's fine. <laughs> and Dad says hello. You're staying with your aunt, right? Yes. So, uh, what do you got for me? Well, I was hoping you could debrief me on the investigation. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm just a bit... Well, my undercover assignments are usually not so... Uh, suburban. Yeah. I understand. The victim was a senior named Jake Rogers. As usual, none of the family, teachers, or students know about any enemies he may have had. Nothing came up from searching his home, computer, cell phone, or locker. His bank records tell a different story. He had a fairly large savings account and a lot of cash deposits. We suspect he was involved in something shady. Drugs, gambling, or blackmail. That's where you fit in. Talk to the students and see what you can find out. We think he might have kept information about his activities in a notebook or journal. So keep a lookout for anything like that. Anything else? That's it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Nancy. Bye, Uncle Steve. Nothing really to look at here. Menu. H I S J I S H CR3. Interesting. Let's take a can we, can we take a picture of this? I have a feeling that those uh, words in different colors there are gonna Gonna mean something. Gonna mean something specific. Better keep an eye on that. Vertical blast. Ahoy, matey. Your job be to scrub our barnacle ridden decks by blasting them, up, blasting them out of the way with your magic ball. Be on the lookout for creatures, objects, with special powers. Scrubbing a chest increases your paddle size. Scrubbing a mine decreases the paddle size. Scrubbing an anemone slows down the magic ball. Scrubbing a whirlpool speeds up the magic ball. Good luck and start your scrubbing. All right. somewhere.
Uh, we actually get seven balls. Is that is that right? I got distracted. Gotta get all these barnacles off. The music just stopped. It's kind of creepy now. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. It's actually going faster now. I used to love arcade games like this when I was a kid. Awesome. Look how big my pal is! To the right, come on. I spent all this time playing. We've got a crime to solve. A kid got murdered, and we're just like, yeah. Let me play my arcade games first, though. It's important. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shout out the uh, bigger paddle there. There you go. Nice one. Be nice if I could get it inside that top row there. one. Let me turn the jukebox back on. Well, I crashed. That was not fair. <laughs> you cheated. Can't have this game from the 90s crash on me and then say I lose. That's not right. This happened a lot with Game with the 90s. I guess we need to come in here first and try to get that uh, bigger paddle. 
actually, we should get this first. There we go. back over a little bit. Is there like real time in this? When I come out of here, is it going to be like midnight? Ooh, close one. Ugh, missed again. Got one. There we go. There we go. for that one. Wasn't ready for that one. Why is it going so fast? Oh. oh, come on. I had that one. You've given me a lot of different ones that were a lot further away than that. Only three left. Four. We can get this last one here. Hmm. <laughs> Whoops. See, that one wasn't even as close as the other one. Oh. 
Two left. One more. It's become a lot more finicky in these later rounds. Fun. This one's out of order. Bummer. Alright. So I guess we probably just need to go to uh, the school. Right? Is that what this is? Oh no, that's the lodge. Uh, this is the school, obviously. Paseo de Mar High School. The fighting manatees. Nineteen seventy six. Let's make sure we're taking a look at. Uh, everything here at the entrance if we can. Doesn't look like they have too much here for us to look at. At least not yet. I'll go in the hallway though. Press forward. Let's look at this stuff here. Surf club. A map. So this is going to be uh, right, left, down, up. Letters first will help my plight. The first letters will help my plight. Right, left, down, up. This must be his locker. I don't think I have anything with his uh, combination on it, though, did I? Jake's locker has old police tape on it. HEV2, I don't know what that means. Someone's left a strange message on the bulletin board. Could it have been Jake? XER3. Okay, um, hang on. That was just my journal. Ned, victim. Need to be looking out for his journal. Jake worked in the library. We need to find the library. Daryl Gray says he didn't know Jake very well, but he seemed shook up about Jake's murder. Let's look at our to-do list. Okay, um, I did this. Done. All right, so I just need to get to the library and talk to some students, basically. Is this the same bulletin board? This is a different one. Another one. Find the morning edit edition and discover another crime. The answer is in black and white to how I'll do the time. I R D two. What do these letters mean? Hmm. Honor student of the month. All right. We're learning a little bit here. Homecoming. Hang on. Did I get everything I needed to get here? 
que ça. KRL2. Not sure what those letters mean. Should we take a picture of that one? just all the same thing. It's just got a big hitbox on it. All right. Um, uh, we're still looking for the library. It looks like it's over this way. Which is where we want to go. trying to take my time here so I don't miss anything. Student art. Nothing under the student art. This looks like a puzzle. Is it not? I guess it's not. Wait, did I just go in circles? Kinda. Just keep moving forward. Looks like we found the library. Right? Okay. Finding all kinds of coins, but I'm not finding anything to look at. Hey, buddy. Hi, my name's Nancy Drew. What's your name? Hal Tanaka. Actually, my first name is much longer than that. <laughs> but I want to fit in here in America, so I chose Hal as my nickname. I'm a Japanese exchange student. Why do you think it's easier to have an American name? I want to be part of the culture and succeed in this country. Do you plan on staying in America after you finish high school? My family is counting on me to succeed here. I must make them proud of me. Hmm. Proud of you? In Japan, it's very important that you do something your family can take pride in. I have made some mistakes, but I try to be a decent person. Hmm. What kind of mistakes? Yeah, he's an honor student of the, of the month. about this now. Please excuse me. Talk to him again. What can you tell me about Daryl Gray? He's very popular and a good politician, too. Oh. Just like his father. Like his father? I hear he was a great politician, but not a very good businessman. I think his company went bankrupt a few years ago. Oh. Let's see if he knows the combination to the locker. Do you know the combination to Jake Rogers' locker? I'm sorry, Nancy. I can't help you with that. All right. Bye. See you later, Nancy. I like him. Here's a big old bulletin board. What do you want to show me? Paseo High School, school News, seniors... All entries and art exhibit must be picked up at the library on Thursday. See Eloise Roof for info. Oh, here it is. CR1 will seal my murder's fate. Oh, the hidden videotape will seal my murderer's fate. Oh, hidden videotape. Can we find um, Aunt Eloise anywhere? Oh, 
Wait, can I not go in there? I can't go in the gym? Three of them. Yikes. Nowhere to turn to, nowhere to hide. Let the books in the library be your answer guide. So is this like, um, kind of Dewey Decimal? Is this where we're going to find the books and the tape at? Oh, I was like, I hear footsteps. It kind of scared me a little bit. A symbol of kanji? I don't know what that word is. Worn with great pride reflects big secret that someone must hide. Yeah, this one's tough to read. He he did what it took to make the to make the grade ever if even if it meant oh something to keep up his Ooh. it's like it's not a G what is it C C H O R O D A D E charade C H E oh cheating even if it meant cheating to keep up his grade. Hmm. So there's a cheater here. And I guess Jake knew about it. Why would you zoom me in on this? There's nothing in there. I need a soda yet, but I might need one eventually. So let's, uh, hang on to that. Okay. May need that eventually. Trash can. Can't go in there. Can't go in there. Oh, jeez, dude. Whoa, a new girl at school. <laughs> He's kidding me. Do you me. realize what destiny has brought you today? Yours truly, Hector Sanchez. But you can just call me the Hulk. I want to say, how did you know I was here? You're just standing there watching me, and it freaked me out. The Hulk? <laughs> you are new around here. I play for the Manatees, one of the best teams in the state. I leave the others in the dirt, man. Soon it's college ball, and then the pros. Showtime. He's a winner. College ball? Yeah, I'm playing great football this year. I'm expecting an offer from a Big Ten school any day now. Yeah, so you cheated in order to uh, make the grade, right? A Big Ten school? What will you major in? Football! I'm destined to become a college <laughs> star and then turn pro. Doesn't then, work that way. When I'm famous, jerks like Jake Rogers will eat my socks for Ooh. breakfast. Doesn't Does Jake like Jake. Rogers' death concern you? Why should it? I have a big future ahead of me. That's all that concerns me. Sorry, can't talk now. I gotta go to practice. Later. So you're just gonna stand there staring at me and then you didn't even give me any info? How's it going? How could I get into Jake's locker? I could tear the door off with my teeth. <laughs> but it just might be easier to ask Hal Tanaka. His locker was mm, right next to Jake's. I already asked Hal. Do you know Hal Tanaka? That dude is always studying. He's a huge fan of mine. Real smart guy. 
but I never understood why a brain like Tanaka would hang out with slime like Jake. Hal was a friend of Jake's? Let's just say I saw them talking together a lot. Jake's locker was right next to Hal's. But they weren't really friends, is that what you're saying? Jake didn't really have friends, and Hal... He may seem pretty chill, but I've seen him crack a couple of times. He's seriously uptight. Oh. Crack a couple of times? He's got a temper, a bad one. Oh. He lets the pressure build and build until he's wound so tight the slightest thing sets him off. Like last week, I strike him out during gym, and he goes ballistic and charges the mound. He's got some serious issues. Now that I think of it, last time I saw them together, Hal seemed pretty upset. <laughs> I like Hal. What can you tell me about Daryl Gray? He seems like a cool guy. His family used to sponsor the annual football awards dinner until last year. You know, he's the one who found Jake's body. Really interesting. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Anything else How's I need going? to talk to him about? I'll talk to you later. Nothing See else. Ya. See ya. Fighting manatees. Crane School of Self Defense. 555 five, five, Judo. Wonder if we can uh, keep that phone number. Hmm. 555 five, five, Judo. Um. And I can't go in here. Alright, should we. I mean, we need to go to. We need to try to go find Eloise, but I kind of want to talk to Hal again, too. Is he still in here? He's gone. Oh, there he is. Have you heard of Hulk Sanchez? Heard of him? Hulk holds the conference record for quarterback sacks. He's been the state's number one player since he was a freshman. Wow. He's also a candidate for a big university, even with his injury. Injury? Hulk got hurt a few weeks ago. Ever since that game, he hasn't played the same. Hmm. I worry that his chances of playing for a top school are not as good as before his injury. Hulk said your locker's right next to Jake's. Are you sure you don't know the combination? Hmm. I remember one day, Jake was mad because he couldn't open his locker. He told me he wished I had a phone handy. Would that help? Nope. Bye. Farewell, <laughs> Nancy. He wished he had a phone. I think we can go back and go to the right from where we came in. We didn't look at anything down this direction yet. Looks like we can't go in any of the classrooms. Nothing on this one? There's gotta be something on here. Which one do you want me to look at? This one. The Roaring Girl, a Jacobian comedy performance is our Friday s through Sunday at 8 p.m. Doctor Deception, a poetic drama written by the senior essay winner of Paseo High School. Student files under lock and key will show the lies of the doctor to be. Okay, tickets go on sale Monday at 9. Let me check my journal. Hal said Jake wished he had a phone handy to remember his locker combination. So he's going to take a picture of it, I assume. All right, let me see here. What did we do? Still have to do that. Still have more there. Can't check that off yet. Still have more there. Did that. Okay. Check out all the posters in the gym area. Check. Okay. Can't check that off yet. I need to go back and talk to Hulk again. Still have to do that. I need to use my phone for his... Oh. Oh. Okay. Um. It 
Is that the stairs? Hang on, let's go this way first. Don't want to go down the stairs yet. Is this, oh, were we back in the library? Where is this? I mean, not the library. Huh. There's a lot of stuff on this board. Friends and family invited to come to the fifth annual picnic of the Paseo de Mar Junior High School Marching Band. Meet in the parking lot at nine in the morning. Picnic will take place December 8th at Walden Reservoir. Woodwinds and percussion should wear full dress, whites, except for hats. Brass recital is set for later. Is that it? I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything here. Okay. Let's head this way. Hi, I'm Connie. Hi, Can't Connie. Come around here, are you? No. Usually, Paseo del Mar High is really quiet and boring. Hmm. Lately, it's been totally out of control. Out of control? One of the students was killed last week. Hmm. Who was killed? Oh, just this wannabe stud named Jake Rogers. Oh. What do you mean? Poor Jake. Jake Rogers was a total creep. Nobody oh. liked him. Oh. I gotta go now. Later. Uh, I'm not done talking to you yet. Hey, Nancy. Need something? I didn't even introduce myself. <laughs> How'd you know my name? Wow. Do you know how Tanaka? Not very well. He's an exchange student from Japan and a total workaholic. He told me he's trying to get more scholarships for college. Lately, he's been looking really burnt out. I think the pressure's getting to him. This is the lady to come to for, for the gossip. She knows everything about everybody. What pressure? I guess it's a big deal for his family that he get into a good school on a free ride. Yeah. What about Daryl? How well do you know Daryl Gray? I wish I knew him better. Oh. He's the only guy I'd ever consider <laughs> dating. He's student council president, holds a cool job at a diner called Maxine's, and drives a Seaback X80. Drives a sports car and works at a diner? That doesn't compute. His dad's yeah, a politician, remember? Daryl's family was rich and used to throw major parties all the time, but not anymore. Maybe Daryl was working with Jake? What do you know about Hulk Sanchez? He's a big jock on campus. Never dated him or anything. Okay. Have you seen any of those weird messages on the bulletin boards? <sighs> yes, and if I catch the guy who's doing it, he's going to be in big trouble. Oh. I bet it's the same person who keeps on setting off the soda machine alarm. <laughs> huh. I guess that comes with a territory of being school monitor. Normally it's not this hectic. When I figure out who's been pulling all these pranks. Hmm. She seems like she's got a bit of a temper on her, too. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Nancy. All right. Can we do anything else with hey, her? Hey, Nancy. Need something? No. See you later. See you later. Adios. Adios. It's more, more about the, the, uh, the judo, judo stuff. Are these, uh just hints or are they more monies for something? I mean, I could get a drink, right? Let me have spot cola. Mm. <laughs> yeah, to whip my whistle. Phone book? Nope. It's just the soda machine. Okay. We could go in this room. Is this where Aunt Eloise is? That's off limits for you. 
Okay. Until you can show me some teaching credentials, you're not allowed in. Okay, Connie. Take a chill pill. Um, which way you did I want to go? I think I could come back here and talk to Hal again. Right? Was he this way? Still here. How's it going? I thought you had practice. What can you tell me about Connie Watson? She hangs out at the gym a lot. I heard she's been having a real tough time. Tough time? Tough time? I heard she's been having some money problems. Oh. I'm really sorry you got injured. Does that affect your chances of playing college ball? I had a little sprain. No big deal. Within a week, I was better than before and impressing the football scouts. I'm as strong as ever. At least he's got confidence in himself. I like that. Goodbye. See ya. How's it going? Gotta go. I gotta go. You told me you Bye. had to go to practice. Okay, let me uh, check my list here. I'm gonna make Connie leave. Oh, so I need to set off the uh, the alarm for the machines. Check. Okay, oh. Connie's wearing the kanji, kanji symbol. Check. Okay. Still have to do that. I thought I went to the library. Here's the library. Do I have a key? Nope. This one? Nice. Hang on, go back a little bit here. This place is so big! Wow. Okay, I don't even know where to start in here. What do I need to look at? And why is the music so scary? Sanity of steroid abuse, use and effects of exogenous anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are drugs used to enhance athletic performance and build muscle mass. They are virtually all derivatives of the testosterone or substances which promote the overproduction of testosterone in primates. In America, anabolic steroids are classed as a controlled substance and possession of even small amounts of Hectanol or human growth hormone can land a dealer in jail, yet steroid use has doubled and redoubled in, America, in the American fitness scene over the last 20 years. What is the attraction? Why would a star, amateur, or professional athlete risk jail time for possession? Because many people think they can get that little bit of extra performance if they take the stuff. Peer pressure among college and even high school athletic teams is another reason. If everyone on the team is taking the drugs, you have to as well to keep up because the early gains from anabolic steroid use are awesome. But there are no shortcuts to athletic excellence. The psychological side effects are terrible. Liver damage, heart disease, and impotence are just a few problems. The low body fat levels encountered with heavy steroid use are unhealthy. 
In addition, though anabolic steroids grow at a fast rate, they don't change the composition of the connective tissue nor the heaviness of the bones. Thus, while the muscles are stronger, the support systems for them are not, so injury is often the result. Okay, so you're telling me that Hulk took some steroids, did he? That could be a problem. Okay. Um, let's take a look. Ooh. That medallion Connie is wearing is kanji for crane. Okay, so that's the... Um, That is the uh, judo facility, right? Check. Haven't done that. Still looking in here. Okay. Oh, Harry Houdini. Born in 1874 in Budapest, Hungary, under the name of Eric Weiss, Houdini's family soon moved to Appleton, Wisconsin. From there, at the age of 12, Houdini ran away from home. By the age of 13, he had reunited with his family in New York City and begun performing magic card tricks under his original stage name, Eric the Great. In the course of his illustrious 33 year career, Houdini escaped from prison cells, handcuffs, leg irons, straight jackets, packing crates, milk cans, coffins, and St. Louis tycoon J.J. Thompson's infamous watery grave. In addition to being the greatest escape artist of all time, Houdini was also master of illusion. In 1918, at the Hippodrome in New York City, he made an elephant disappear on stage, and according to Houdini, the elephant, Jenny, weighed 10,000 pounds. His brilliant skill and ability to baffle an amazing audience remains unsurpassed to this day. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm not sure why you had me reading about Houdini at this point, but pretty cool. Marie Antoinette, born in Vienna, Austria on November 2nd, 1755, she was the youngest daughter of Francis I and Maria Theresa, Emperor and Empress of the Holy Roman Empire. I didn't know that. In 1770, as a young teenager, she was obliged to wed Louis XVI of France to symbolize an alliance between France and her parents' dynasty, the Habsburgs of Austria. Four years later, Marie Antoinette became Queen of France when her husband was crowned Louis the Fifth, Louis the Sixteenth. As queen, her lavish lifestyle made her unpopular. While the commoners stood in breadlines praying for food, they cursed the queen who was living so comfortably in her grand palace. The people's discontent grew and grew until a full-scale revolution broke out in 1789. In 1791, it looked like the monarchy would not survive, and Marie sought assistance from other European rulers. It was arranged for the king and queen to escape Paris on the night of June 20th, but revolutionary forces apprehended the royal couple at Venice on June 25th and escorted them back to Paris as prisoners. Varenne. We're just doing some research, just some casual research here. Applegate, Lizzie. Well loved by San Franciscans both for her cultural and humanitarian contribution, Lizzie Applegate was a talented actress and songwriter who began her career entertaining minors at local gold camps. In 1880, Lizzie wrote and starred in the tremendously successful play The Bandit's Treasure, whose cast included Norma Dentfin, Lenore Skost, and Pam Dory. This initial success was followed by a string of other hits, including The Riddle of the Chinese Box, The Fire in the Phoenix Eye, and The Rainbow's Gold. So we're gonna have to put these back where they're like supposed to go. 
Braille is a code of small raised dots on paper that can be read by touch. In 1829, the Braille system was published based on a grid of six dots. This system allows 63 different arrangements of dots, which represents the alphabet, punctuation marks, numbers, and music. Braille books are pressed from metal plates. The dots are stamped on both sides of the paper by a process called interpointing. The dots on one side do not interfere with the dots printed on the other. That's pretty cool. I want to take a picture of that. And I think that's it for here. Okay. I don't think we looked at any of this stuff. Oh. Maps, maps everywhere. What? What's this? If anything happens... To me, seer. Oh, S E A R C H search under my combo in. And catalog. Search under my combo and catalog. Hmm. Okay. Can I not come around here and look at this stuff? Can I do some research, please? Huh, but I don't know what his uh, combo is, do I? Haven't done that. Can't check that off yet. Follow the directions of the secret message in the map drawer. combo. Yeah, I don't know. What I'm supposed to be searching here. So if I go in a L3. Yeah, not sure on that one. I have to come back here a little bit later. This place is so big, I'm afraid I'm going to miss something in here. Okay, so we can come. What? Somebody's gonna be standing right behind me again, aren't they? That scared me. What language is this? All 
All right, there was nothing else. Nothing on this side. In 17th century Spain, Captain General Juan Ignacio de Santa Ana Domingo was something of a celebrity. Known to sailors simply as El Toro, he was the Spanish royalty's go-to guy when it came to transporting exceptionally valuable cargo from present-day Central America back to Spain. Not only was he an expert navigator, but he was gifted... He was a gifted tactician when it came to naval warfare. He was adept at eluding and, when necessary, defeating the pirates who often pursued his ships. By 1665, he and the seven majestic galleons under his command had become legendary. But four years later, as summer in the New World came to a close, the legend took a tragic turn. Anchored in the port of Porto of Portobello, El Toro abruptly ordered his Seven Virtues fleet to set sail for Spain despite increasingly bad weather and reports that the infamous privateer Henry Morgan was in the area. The cargo he was transporting must have been extraordinarily precious for him to take such a risk, one that unfortunately proved disastrous. No one knows which the fleet encountered, Henry Morgan or the hurricane which devastated the Caribbean islands days later, or perhaps both, but this much is known. El Toro, his crew, and the entire Seven Virtues fleet were never seen again. As with the... Nuestra Señora de Atocha of the Tierra Firm fleet a half century before all had disappeared without a trace. And so somewhere hidden in the depths of the glint glinting blue waters of the Caribbean rests the remains of El Toro's galleons and a treasure so valuable that scores of men lost their lives trying to protect it. Its precise whereabouts remain a mystery, but someday some lucky soul, perhaps armed with only scuba gear, a metal detector and a shovel will find it. Someday, El Toro will be a celebrity once again. An overview, one of the most ancient and widespread legends known to humankind can be summed up thusly. Scattered over the earth are 13 humanoid skulls carved out of pure crystal. At some point in the future, fate will bring the 13 skulls together and they will speak, imparting wisdom that will save the human race from annihilation and usher in a golden era of peace and enlightenment. There are several versions of this legend. In one, the skulls were created by the Mayans, Incans, or Aztecs and collectively form a repository of information detailing how and why humans came to be. Another legend credits their creation to the extraterrestrials who seeded the earth with the human race and left the skulls behind to explain their actions at some point in the future. Yet another contends that the skulls are ancient in origin, but more important, that each skull is somehow magical in and of itself. The distinctive gifts they offer their owners reputedly include precognition, clairvoyance, telekinesis, and of course, immortality. Some variations combine all of the above. What is both indisputable and intriguing about the general legend and its smaller colorful variations is that several mysterious crystal skulls have indeed been discovered in the past millennium, turning up in all corners of the earth. What follows is an examination of everything that is currently known about these skulls in hope of separating the facts of their existence from the fantasies of human imagination. The Whisperer. The first documented reference to the crystal skull known as the Whisperer came in 1532, shortly after Hernando de Soto helped Francisco Pizarro ambush and capture the Incan Emperor Atahualpa at the Battle of Catamarca. I don't know. De Soto's aide de camp, while updating the de Soto's expedition records, subsequent imprisonment, de Soto befriended the Incan ruler in time. Atahualpa told de Soto a secret he possessed an exquisitely detailed life-size human skull that the ancient ones had carved out of pure clear crystal. He happened upon it at the hut of a deceased high priest whose astonishingly advanced age had caused his fellow priests out of fear and jealousy to slip him a fatal dose of poison. Atahualpa, wish I knew how to pronounce that properly, took a fancy 
fancy to the skull and kept it, and soon realized that the skull which he had contended, which he contended would sometimes whisper to him in an unearthly voice using familiar words, was giving him immunity to all human ailments as long as he possessed the skull. Atahopas told De Soto he would live forever. But like the priest before him, and like everyone who possessed this particular skull after him, Atahualpas soon discovered that while the skull could perhaps protect him from the ravages of time and nature, it was no match for the treachery of his fellow man. To De Soto's great surprise and dismay, Pizarro had Atahualpa executed, although there is no other mention of the skull in De Soto's record. It is highly doubtful that the Spaniard would have left such treasure behind when he returned to Europe in 1536. Indeed, the next, the next documented reference to the crystal skull, which Atahualpa seems to have inadvertently bequeathed to De Soto, came in a letter written by a nobleman in the court of Philip II, the member of the Austrian Habsburg family who took over the Spanish Empire in 1556. While a guest at the Habsburg's palace in Vienna, the nobleman mentions encountering a crystalline head of death, which a manservant swore made utterances, strange and low, too terrible for the ear to bear. Apparently, the skull then made its way to France, most likely via Anne of Austria, who married King Louis XIII of France in 1615. Because the next reference to a death's head carved from remarkably clear crystal can be found in the manifest of a ship belonging to René Robert Cavalier, Sir de la Salle, a French explorer who, in 1684, was preparing for a journey that would take the skull, ironically, back to the new world from which it had come. The fact that La Salle took the skull with him on his expedition to colonize the Mississippi River Valley suggests that he may have been aware of its reputation for conferring immortality upon its owner. But once again, his real enemy proved to be not age or disease, but his fellow man. A group of his men stranded in what is now Texas after the expedition landed in the wrong place and antagonized the local Native Americans, eventually mutinied and killed La Salle so they could abandon their mission and head for the relative safely of the French outposts in Canada. The Whisperer, however, appears to have been left behind and didn't reappear until almost 200 years later. The photo to the right, found in the basement of a library in Jonesboro, Arkansas, suggests that by 1881, Atahalpa's crystal skull had found itself in the hands of a tra traveling huckster who apparently used it to lure, let's see here, Curtis Caldwell's Cures and Curiosities, the Whispering Crystal School, Wonder of the Ancient Incan World, Inquire and Sight, who apparently used it to lure potential patrons to his wagon so he could sell them various balms and elixirs. If he is the same Curtis Caldwell who, according to census records, settled in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he lived and worked to the ripe old age of 93, dying only when a dissatisfied customer set fire to his house in a fit of anger. If the Whisperer was in Caldwell's house, it no doubt survived the fire, but exactly what happened to it next has proved impossible to discern, and its current whereabouts is a mystery. But what is known about the skull's previous owner could prove very useful in solving that mystery, for all the people who have possessed it have had two things in common. They lived for an unusually long time, and they always, without exception, met with death at the hand of another. In other words, the trail that leads to the discovery of this particular crystal skull will likely be one that begins with murder. That's an interesting story. All right, is there any more? Go around to the other side. Look at these. Hey, look, guys, Jake was here. Paseo, things to remember, me. The answer to my fate lies in the box. A matchbook behind Maxine's schedule holds the first step. My messages hold the remaining 18 steps. The elements tell the order, the letter and digit tell the direction. Okay, so it's like up, down, left, right on these. I'm gonna take a picture of that. That's gonna be important. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh, 
recording it. The elements tell the order. The letter and digit tell the direction. So it's like I and then up to CL. But like where where does it start? Look around for Jake's messages holding the 18 steps. Haven't done that. Look at the schedule. Maxine's follow the direction of the secret message in the Can't map drawer. That off yet. I need to go back and talk to Connie again. Did that. All right, so we've got everything that we needed to get in the library. That's good to know. So I guess we could probably just go back down, right? Let's, uh, I guess just kind of go ahead and see if we can look over here anyway. Now yeah, it looks like we're good. All right. Out. still here? Hey, Hal. Connie told me you study too hard. Is that true? Connie doesn't know my study habits. I can handle my studies. I'm behind in my studies and I must get back to the library. Bye, Nancy. Do you know Connie Watson? Yes, we've been in a few classes together. I think she was dating Jake Rogers. Oh, she didn't seem too upset that he was gone. See ya. See you later, Nancy. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go back this way. Go talk to Connie again. Actually, we didn't go this way. Let's, uh, try it. Oh, it's Braille, but I don't know what the combination to get in there is. We'll have to come back here later. Hey, Connie. Hey, Nancy. Need something? Didn't I hear you were dating Jake? Hey, a girl can make a mistake, can't she? <laughs> you probably know his combination, though, don't you? Hulk told me money's been tight for you these days. But what a dork! Hulk Sanchez doesn't know the first thing about my life. He needs to get a life and stop talking about mine. I mean, you're talking about everyone else's, too, so... Your medallion has a symbol that means Crane, and Crane is the name of the judo school on the poster in the gym. What a coincidence. Funny, I never noticed. Yeah, sure you didn't. Gotta go now. Later. What is it you want now? She's I'll getting, talk to you later. She getting Adios. angry. She getting angry with us. Okay. Can we uh, call that phone number? What was it? 555 Judo? seeking any new initiates at this time. We will seek you if you are worthy. Well, that was creepy. Okay, we could change our colors. Cool. Canoeing. Books. Bubbles. I like that one. Castle Malloy. Dread Isle. Hawaii. I like the bubbles. Alright, let's go look at Jake's locker again. And, um... I don't know if we can use our camera on here. I 
don't know. Kind of weird how's that, how it has this, this one piece taped here. Okay, let's look at this again. That's done. Talk to Connie. We just still need to get Connie out. Let's go to the um Let's go to Maxine's again. Talk to Daryl. What can I do for you? Do you know Connie Watson? Not that well. She keeps to herself a lot. I've always thought there's something mysterious about her. Kind of the same way I feel about you. You're very astute there, Daryl. Thanks for the compliment, but I'm already seeing someone. I got a boyfriend. Well, that's cool. I'm just saying, not playing. Yeah, what about Hulk? How well do you know Hulk Sanchez? Big guy, big muscles, big dreams. A lot of football scouts have been coming over to watch him play. He must be under a lot of pressure to perform. Yep. What can you tell me about Hal Tanaka? Hal's an exchange student who's all scholarships and study. He's very intense about becoming a doctor. Hmm. Didn't I hear that you found Jake's body? Yeah. I did. The student council president gets keys to the school. We had an early morning council meeting and I found him lying there. It was the worst thing I ever experienced in my life. And I really don't want to think about it right now. Yeah, I don't blame you. Talk to you later. Take care. All right, we got to find uh what was it? A schedule or something? We all just walk back here? <laughs> what? Daryl, you're not doing your job. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Ew. What did I just pick up? A ladle? Why? Why the ladle? Fish something out of the soup or what? Nothing in the uh, veggies. To Maxine, Daryl, Carl, Yuli, and Mel. From Jake, closing procedure. Okay, is Jake like the manager? Maxine wanted me to write a memo describing the finer points of closing the diner. Some people think there are some secrets to the process, but it couldn't be easier. After totaling out the cash register, the cashier brings the cook the receipts to store in the potato bin. Okay. The cook also needs to check the life expiration dates on all foods and throw out expired ones. The cashier and cook get all food crumbs off the counter. The cook preps all condiments for the next day. All surfaces are washed so they are bright and shiny. All right, look at all this. Like, what does that mean? Okay. Here's the schedule. There was a matchbook behind here somewhere. Hmm, looks like something was removed here. So the matchbook is somewhere else now? Don't know what that means again. That looks like it means something. You're trying to tell me something.
wonder if the schedule means anything too. Here's kind of where we started at. Knife. Tomato. Why did you want me to look at this? I don't understand. Little creepy. can't go back this way. All right, let me look at this while we're in here. Did that. Okay. So we just still need to figure out how we can get into Jake's locker. Looked at the schedule. Haven't done that. Still need some more clues from Jake. We need to get in the teacher's lounge. Have to get rid of old uh, Snoopy Connie in there. All right. Wonder if uh, Uncle Steve is still here. I guess we just go back to the school. Like, how do you set off the alarm here? Stick a ladle in it. Um. I don't know what else we can do. I think I've talked to, uh... How's it going? Talk to I'll everybody talk to all later. that I can. Bye. You're still here. See ya. Nothing See you nothing, later, Nancy. Nothing to do. of the month. Cute kids. 
Are these all the, uh, like, developers and game workers, like, their senior pictures or something like that? That's pretty, pretty funny. Connie, would you mind leaving, please? I got, I got stuff I need to do in here. Let's call Ned. Hello, is this Martha Windglasser? <laughs> Who is please calling me? Ned. Um, no, I'm trying to reach Ned Nickerson. Nancy, it's Ned. I, I thought with you being undercover and everything, I had to take on a different persona. Ned, I'm the one who's undercover, not you. Okay, okay. I guess I'll just go undercover vicariously through you, which for some odd reason feels very deja vu-ish. It'd probably be a good idea if you didn't mention my assignment to anyone. You never know who may be related to this case, even up at Emerson. Your secret's safe with me, along with your heart. Oh, you're such a sweetie. Enough lovey-dovey talk. It'll make me miss you even more. So have you found any homicidal secrets yet? Let's see. What do I need helps? Uh, Ned's help with here. Well, I need to. I need to get into Jake's locker and I need to figure out the teacher's lounge. So let's start with Jake. Help me get into Jake's locker. Figure out how you can translate his name into numbers. The answer is probably staring you in the face right at this exact moment. Okay. So it's five, two... Five, three. I All gotta right. go. Just... I'll, I'll call you back here in a few minutes. We go. Videotape is empty. Dread. English essays through the ages. Somebody took this too. Treatise on Etiquette by Prudence Rutherford. Etiquette is the art of communicating in a method that puts the receiver at ease and elicits a feeling of comfort. Etiquette is also essentially found on reason. When studying etiquette, one must always be on guard for incomplete and specious instruction. Just as several questionable lawyers have established many unreasonable laws, so likewise many teachers of this fine art have introduced unreasonable etiquette practice. Our main objective in etiquette is to adjust out behavior. Is that supposed to be our? <laughs> is there actually a typo in it? in several distinct ways. One adjustment is in our behavior towards men, women's superiors, our equals, and those below us. For example, it would be downright rude to attempt to persuade a man or woman equal to us to eat against their wishes. However, it would be ignoble not to attempt to persuade someone of lesser means to eat. It is critical that we all understand these significant nuances. Judo today. Nice. Okay, this is important. Let's read the whole thing, though. Lima, Peru, closed competition provokers another protest, or provokes another protest. Protesters blocked entrance to the South Central American Judo Regionals for not providing a venue for female competitors, despite statistics showing more female judokas than male in several Latin American countries, the Pan-South Central American Judo Division only sponsors competitions for men. Nassau Bahamas Judo Cruise Success. Both judo pr practitioners and enthusiasts enjoyed a lovely eight-day cruise in the Caribbean seas. Travelers enjoyed several talks and demonstrations by Olympian champions and Hachidians. I can't read that word. It's too blurry. Refreshments were a delight and everyone ate tea, cooked ate tea cakes, poolside, and the wonderful 80 degree weather. Uh, let's read the bottom one before we read the important one. Munich, Germany, von Schwester 
crank turns 80. Known for popularizing judo in Germany, Hartmut von Schwesterkrank turned 80 years old last month. The spry octogenarian celebrated his birthday by demonstrating his famous splayed cow hold on President Moldenhauer, who had come to honor Germany's judo pioneer. All right, and the most important one, apparently, according to Jake, says, oh, this is about us. Paseo del Mar, Florida. Mass Marauder flattens foes. Onlookers and participants alike were stunned when an unknown last-minute entry swept the competition and won Paseo del Mar's fifth annual men's judo tournament this month. Wearing a cloth mask to conceal his identity, the winner, who identified himself only as, what is that, Niniko, impressed the or Nineco, <laughs> impressed the capacity crowd with his quickness and control defeating opponent, opponents well outside his weight class. Such excitement and his incredible throwing techniques will make next year's competition even more of a threat. Will the masked man return? Okay, they said the newspaper would hold the key. 1310-9, break-in at local pharmacy. Paseo County police responded to a break-in at the drug station pharmacy on 80th Street in the early morning hours yesterday. Whoever it was knew exactly what they were looking for, said Police Chief Taktig. Tactic. They broke in the building through the back window, took the drugs, and were out through minutes. Okay. According to the report, several vials of hectanol, which again is um, performance-enhancing drugs, it's uh, steroids, several uh, vials of hectanol were taken. We were just lucky that no other damage was done to the store, said owner Stephen Otena. The alarm report came into police headquarters at 2 a.m. on Thursday morning. Police responded and were on the scene within 20 minutes. A broken window was spotted immediately, but the thief had already left the scene. Anyone with information concerning this crime should contact Paseo County Police Department headquarters. It said 1310-9. Um, I think this bulletin board said something about that, right? <coughs> Up, down, left, right. The first letters will help my plight. Wasn't that one. Was it something in here? There was something that said, um, I can't remember which one it was, but there was one that said something about the morning edition of the paper. Or is it just saying that, um, is it just saying that because of the uh, break-in? Find the morning edition and discover uh, another crime. The answer is in black and white to how I'll do the time. All right. Let's see, let's go all the way down to the bottom here. Make sure we've got all this stuff marked off. Check. Did that. Now we've got to figure a way to get Connie out of the stu student union. Check that off yet. Check. Okay. All right, we gotta go back and talk to Hulk again. I did this. Check. Hulk, where are you, bud? How's it going? Hmm. Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? I didn't pay much attention to Jake. I'm tired of talking about that loser. Really? All right, then tell me what you know about the missing steroids. Tell me about the robbery at the drug station pharmacy. Why would I know about a robbery? All I know about is football. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Nancy. Bye. Um, let me out. 
Let me out. Okay. Um, before I go back and talk to anybody else. That's done. Let's call Ned again and figure out about uh, Connie. Hi, Nancy. Hey, bud. Connie won't let me into the teacher's lounge. Look at the bulletin boards to give you a way to get Connie away from her post. Hmm. Look at the bulletin boards. I gotta go. Tschüss. Okay. Um. This is the one about Connie, a symbol for uh, Kanji worn with great pride, reflects big secret that someone must hide. Nowhere to turn, nowhere to hide. Let the books in the library be your answer guide. Um, this is the one about the cheating. Was this one? I don't know what these these uh, letters mean either. What was this one? Come to the game. That's new. I don't remember seeing that one before. I still got to get in that in the library. Ned, you're not helping. Oh, I don't think I looked at this one. Special announcement senior essay contest. The Hilda Emma Swinson Foundation will award a scholarship for $8,000 to the senior best senior essay. The theme of this year's contest is Methods of Good Citizenship and Role Modeling. This is only open to seniors. Interested parties should contact Mr. Suzalo by September 5th. All right, so let's read the letters here that are underlined. Put E-L-E-M-E-N elements. Put elements in order to open puzzle with <laughs> P-U-Z-Z-L-E they, they shouldn't have underlined that if it wasn't part of it put elements in order to open puzzle I kind of already knew that it's not helping me with Connie McGee in here. Debate team. I'm trying to see if there's like just anything, other random things in here too. The hidden videotape will seal my murderer's fate. Yeah. you have anything else to say, Hal? Oh yeah, we can ask everybody about the videotape. Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? I didn't know Jake was interested in video. I avoided him whenever I could. Really? See ya. See you later, Nancy.
Look at this one here in her domain. Drama clubs. Yeah, I'm just not really seeing anything. Ned, you're not helping. Hey, Connie. Hey, hey, guess what? What is it you want now? Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? No. Why are you so interested in Jake anyway? I gotta go now. Later. Wow, she's uh, not helpful at all, is she? I'm gonna call Ned right in front of your face. Hi, Nancy. Connie won't let me into the teacher's lounge. Look at the bulletin boards to give you a way to get Connie away from her post. That doesn't help. I need Ciao. more. Ciao. I need need more hint. Still have to do that. Haven't done that. Still have to do that. Okay. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Here it is. How did how did I not get this one before? Grape, grape, orange, cool. We'll play the alarm in the school. Grape, grape, orange, cool. Okay, so do I need to do that in the uh, the gym one so she's not even here? It's okay. Really? She didn't even hear it. You're in big trouble, Nancy. As an accident. <laughs> oh, game over. Oh no. Okay, so I do have to do it in the other one. Um, I can't hear you with the alarm going off. <laughs> okay. Can she not hear it? Is there another one that I can do that in? I just have to tell hey, her about Nancy, it. Need something? Someone set off the alarm on the soda machine again. Here we go. <sighs> I'll be right back. Yeah, take a picture of this. I'll read it later. probably have a limited amount of time that I can actually get in this office here, so. Uh, 
um, inventory, and it's, is it this one? There we go. Okay, a trophy was not the only prize, but also money of a greater size. Okay. Make sure we're checking all this stuff real quick. Let's save, just in case. Teacher lounge. I don't want to lose my progress. Great Enterprises post third law stock tumbles. Great Enterprises report a $500 million second quarter loss Tuesday, but CEO and founder Eugene Gray remained optimistic about his struggling company. Wait, is this Daryl's? Daryl's father? I thought he was um, uh, in politics. We anticipate increased defense spending in the next year. Our new missile guidance system, Bright Aurora, will be online in six months, and we foresee accelerated growth from this new system. A recent Senate hearing examining possible leaks of classified information in the Paseo del Mar company has soured many investors. Great Enterprise ha stock has sunk by almost 75% in the past year. Despite these setbacks, some analysts remain positive about Gray's enterprise future. They're the most innovative developer of military hardware, said industry analyst Brenda Baumbecker. If they can weather the current storm of mismanagement and loss, they'll do very well with Bright Aurora. Mr. Gray said his company will report a strong profit this year. All right, so that's why Daryl's still uh, driving around in all this, this stuff. All right, CLD2. Is that, uh, yep, it does. Okay. Anything on here that I need to read? It doesn't look like it. I just needed to get that. Fridge, no. Microwave, no. Phone and drawers, computer. This is where we get into uh, Aunt Eloise's computer. Um, what was her password? Uh, view photos. Oh, wise elder. Sorry, what was her uh, login? Wasn't paying attention. Eloise Drew, oh wise elder. Maintenance. Clean stairwell near cafeteria. Repair lock on video lab door. Check ADA requirements for doors. Call Dylan HVAC for boiler service. Change password to boiler room door. I won't worry about that one yet. We may need to come back for that though. Recycle bins empty. To-do list. Locate. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Oh no, I'm taking too long. Locate missing books or order replacement for English essays through the ages. Gather donations for sophomore book sale. Update meeting information for Paseo Book Club. Take down student art exhibit on Friday. Have library computers networked with school. Oh, 
Eloise, we need to find a replacement for Jake Rogers for bulletin board duty. Please send me a list of candidates for Principal Parton. Okay. All right, where's the printer? I'm so in trouble. Okay, let's see. 515 lights left on in the library. Sent email to Eloise Drew. All outer entrance doors checked and locked. Backpack belonging to Connie Watson found in student union. Placed and lost and found. Several outside security lights are out. Work order submitted. Toolbox from Dillon HVAC service left in boiler room. Patrolled outside grounds on foot. Dumpster by cafeteria were not prop properly secured. Several raccoons in area. I've sent several notes to kitchen staff to secure dumpsters. This needs to be addressed. Observed young man peering through school entrance doorway. He identified himself as an exchange student and was... And was what? Trying to retrieve his homework, I let him in and escorted him to his locker and escorted him out of the building. At approximately 8.30, I overheard two individuals arguing in the Gazer Gym. When I approached them, two males ran down Rutherford Street. The first male was approximately 5 foot 5 inches, 120 pounds, red hair, 15 to 18 years old. He wore a green windbreaker and jeans. The second male was 15 to 18 years old and wore a football jersey with a number 8 or 0 on it. Caught several students soaping teachers' lounge windows. Students admitted they were engaged in a senior prank. I instructed the students to clean the windows and to leave campus. The students involved were Daryl Gray, Nathan Gomber, and Yvonne Wong. The students' names have been given to Principal Parton. Heard screams from East Stairwell after calling 911. Found male teenager who apparently fell from the stairs. Attempted to apply first aid. See police report for further details. That's interesting. So if Jake fell from the stairs and the security guard found him, but yet Daryl came and found him in the morning. Okay. Okay, can we get in these? Kind of looks like it, but then it doesn't. Help to knock it. Looks exactly like the one in Jake's locker. Oh, it does. Reminder: submit Hal to knock a senior paper to. Oh. Okay. Cheat, cheat. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Is that the only one? Okay. I mean, that looks like it's it. Are you ready? She's going to catch us. Hello? Hello? You better stop your nosy nosing, or it'll get bent way out of shape. Okay, who's Mitch Dillon? Why is he yelling at me? Alright, let's look and see what we got here. Did that. Did that. Check. Still have to do that. Still have to do that. That's done. That's done. Okay, so we've got to get the rest of Jake's instructions. And we need to go talk to Hal. He should be in here. You plagiarized your senior essay on etiquette, and Jake knew about it. 
Yes, Nancy. I'm very ashamed. My family will be extremely unhappy about this terrible mistake I have made. Somehow, Jake found out I copied that old essay. Then he blackmailed me into doing his homework for him. Why did you copy the essay? I had no other choice. My family won't let me stay in the United States unless I get a scholarship next year. I had to take extra courses to earn the scholarship. Before I realized what I had done, I was buried in work. I copied the essay because I was desperate. What happened when Jake found out? Jake demanded I do all his homework for the rest of the semester, or he would tell my family everything. What hmm. else could I do? My family was depending on me to succeed. Were you desperate enough to kill him? I was not happy about the situation, but I would never kill anyone. I value human life. Please don't tell anyone about this. I beg you. You will gain nothing if you do, and it would destroy my family if they knew what really happened. I regret what I have done. Please let me have this chance to become a doctor. I promise to make up for this mistake, even if it takes the rest of my life. If you didn't kill Jake, do you have any idea who did? When I delivered Jake's homework to him the other day, he mentioned being late for a meeting with Daryl Gray. It was very strange. I didn't know they were friends. Okay. See ya. Farewell, Nancy. So I was thinking Connie, but maybe we do need to go back and talk to Daryl. Connie's still not back. Wait, did we find the braille? The braille thing? I don't remember seeing that. I don't know why I need to get in the maintenance room yet anyway. Um, we'll have to figure that out here shortly. Did that. Okay, did that. So we still need to find some more messages. There should be 18. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Is like the only one I'm missing just the one that's supposed to be on the matchbook? Um, I still don't know what that ladle's for either. Can we go? Back to the diner. I may need to go back to the um, original one too. Hey, gorgeous! Glad you stopped by, Daryl. What's the word on the street? Well, your uncle isn't here. If that's who you're looking for, I'm sorry for saying this, but he's kind of a Mr. Cranky Pants. Mr. Cranky Pants? How so? He's on edge from drinking all of our coffee, and last week he seriously freaked out on me. Oh. What happened? Uh, I don't know. He lost something in the diner and accused us of stealing it. He went kind of psycho. Okay. Oh, there's a lot we can ask him. Let's ask about the video cassette. Do you know why Jake had an empty video cassette case in his locker? Why were you in Jake's locker? Hmm. Let's say we're writing an article. I'm writing an article about the murder for the school newspaper. Oh. I have no idea. <laughs> what else can I do for you? <laughs> All right. Um. Let's ask about his dad. Is your dad the owner of Gray Enterprises? Yep, that's him. I have an internship in the computer department at the plant. It's mega boring, but it'll look good on my college application. Okay. I guess we can continue with that line. Didn't I hear that Gray Enterprises went bankrupt? So what if it did? My dad is working really hard to get the company back on track, and it doesn't help to have vultures like you gloating over it. I'm sorry, Daryl. I didn't mean to gloat. 
That's okay. I'm just a little touchy about it. Yeah. What else can I do for you? I us ask about, um, the prank. Someone said you were caught soaping up the windows on the teacher's lounge. Yeah, I totally got busted. It was a senior prank. I had to spend two days in detention. Wasn't that the night Jake was murdered? Yeah, I guess it was. Never really thought about that. Hmm. Hal Tanaka told me Jake said he had a meeting with you once, but I thought you said you hardly knew him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had to talk to me about work. Yeah, but if you work together, then it's not like you hardly See knew you him. Later. Oh, before I forget, someone left this note for you. It was on the counter when I got back from break. Oh. Oh, that's that guy who just threatened me. I have the solution to your mystery. Meet me in the basement of the maintenance room at the high school. Bye, Nancy. That doesn't sound like a good idea. So we still can't get the matchbook, which is why I thought we needed the ladle. I thought maybe it'd be in one of these. Doesn't look like I can go back here though. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, let's try it again. I knew that was going to happen. We still gonna blow up the uh, the diner? Get out! So, can I not get out that fast or what? So what do I do here? Okay, that's what the ladle's for. Got it. What are the bolt cutters for? I didn't see anything with a lock on it. I guess I could cut off another lock. Let's check our to-do list here. Check. Can't check that off yet. Still need the one. I still have to do that. Um, oh, that's not where I wanted to go. Hey, Daryl. What can I do for you? Nothing. Bye. Later. <laughs> I don't think there was anything else at the house. Let's go back to the school again. Try to see if I can find um, the information on the Braille. Okay. Suspects Daryl works at his father's company. House said Jake was running late for a meeting with Daryl. Some Yahoo named Mitch Dillon wants me off the case. about Connie still. I don't think we're going to get anything oh, else out of Hal. I'm really embarrassed to see you again. See you later. 
See you later, Nancy. I'm really embarrassed to see you, but I'll see you later. Let's go out this way, see if we can see Connie. Hey, Nancy, need something? No. See you later. Adios. Adios. I don't think I need to get back in the other room for anything either, though. Hmm. Oh, is this it? One... Hang on, this might be the answer to the braille that I need. Okay, so let's see here. It's like this. Then there's one, two, three down. But it's on the right side. Is there something with two down on the right side? Maybe I can call Ned and find out about the Braille. And call Mitch. Let's call Ned. Hi, Nancy. I mean, I know what the maintenance room means. I just don't know how to decipher that. What did the, the dots on the lock to the maintenance room mean? The They're map. Braille notation. The encyclopedias in the library must have information on how to decipher them. Yeah. Bye, Ned. Bye, Nancy. Okay, but we had we had the uh, the photo of the Braille. See, I was thinking it would, was something like this. We had the two, we had three down, and we had like this one. I don't know. Um, here, this. So like, here's the letters. but I don't know what letters it's supposed to be. Maybe like Jake? But Jake didn't have anything to do with the, uh, the maintenance room. Hmm. I never did read this one, did I? You might be wondering why I'm even sending this, and I wish I had 
better explanation. So many times in the hallways, we catch each other's eyes and it seems like we both want to say something, but we just keep walking. You with your friends and me alone. There's so much I want to say to you every time I drive to or from school. It's like you're in the car with me and we have these amazing conversations. And I'm thinking, will this ever become true? Can you ever forgive me for what I did? Can I? I want to explain, but a part of me knows that it's not safe and stupid to do. Some, sometimes I just can't keep it bottled inside me and I want to scream it from the rooftops. Is this crazy? Am I? So that was Connie's note. Oh, maybe it's this here, maintenance room. Note. Okay, there we go. That's what I needed. So it's gonna be... Hang on, let me take a picture of this on my phone so I can remember it. On my real life phone. All right, so it's gonna be... N O T E Here we go. Coming in. Nothing to look at in here. This looks super sketch. Oh boy, this is where we die. Wait, what's this one? I can't even look at it, I'm too close. I'll melt my phone. I don't know where to go. This is scary. There's the matchbook I needed. Can I just get out now? Uh oh, somebody, somebody broke that. What am I gonna do? Um, well. And I don't even have my phone anymore. This is, this is horrible news. What do I do? Toolbox. Gloves. Anything else? No. Oh. There's a, a little hatch there. Let me put my gloves on. Too late. <laughs> oh no. Third degree burns. Yes, let's try again. And do I have to pick up everything again or do I still have it? Make sure. Nope. Okay, I need the gloves. Okay. But I don't remember the, I don't know the, the passcode to this. Did that. This is a good time to do this, right? Can't check that off yet. Let's save as a boiler. All 
I don't know what I don't know what the the passcode to this is. That's what I need. Just forget the whole thing. Just Ouch, too hot. Too hot. Let's get the gloves back on. Ouch, too hot. too hot. But I have my special gloves on. Ouch, too hot. Ouch, too hot. Um Okay. One more on this one. Oh, almost had it. All right, I think I know what to do now though. All right, let me make sure I still have all my stuff. Nope, I specifically saved just for that reason. Okay, gloves. bolt cutters and gloves and that one's good and then this one needs to come down a little bit why is it locked good where it is. Why can't I do this one? I don't understand. I, do, I don't... I thought I knew what to do here. Well, I thought I knew what to do. I mean, the bad thing is I can't even look at my phone to uh, get any information here. No, well, let's get out of here. I gotta get the gloves first anyway. Don't need to worry about the matchbook until I get the gloves. can't take any of this. All right. Um, let's do the padlock. The school was built in, it said 1969? No? Okay, well, okay. So then the gloves. Why can't I still not do this? I... Ouch, too hot. Ouch, too hot. I don't know. Either way, I'm still stuck here. Why, why can I not pull these? I, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's not gonna do me any good. It's too hot to reach. I know. 
I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting me pull the other... Pull the other levers. Maybe we have to... Maybe we have to alternate. do this one. Why? Okay, so it's like this. Yeah, you just had to alternate them. That was very confusing. All right, let me pick this up. And... Let's see if we can figure out how to get out of here. Bolt cutters? Was something over here. The flames were too hot to reach. What was it? Nothing. I should look around first before I leave. Videotape. There we go. All right, we're out of the school. So this is where we want to go. Let's put this back. This is where we want to go watch the videotape now. I don't remember which room it was in. You here? Let's pull this out. See. Mm. Oh. Huh. He's just full of trouble, isn't he? I need something to make this work. All right, we did Jack. that. Still have to do that. Done that. Did I lose the uh, the matchbook, or did I not pick it up this time? I and mean, I don't want to go back down there. But we may have the two. Was there anything in here? We may have to go back down into the, uh, 
boiler room again because I don't think I picked up the matchbook that last time. My bad. Okay, I did pick it up. Well, all right. Still broken. Still broken. All right, well, let's go to the library then. Wait, we had to search the catalog for something from Jake. What was it? I don't remember. I really don't remember what it was. Uh, let me go... I go back over and look again. Search under my combo in the catalog. Your combo is was just Jake, it was. Five Two, five, three. Okay. Jake Rogers under my seat. Reference, okay. Under my seat. Can I come back here? It says to search under his seat. Fiction. We can, I mean, I guess we can kind of go upstairs here. Not seeing anything there. Quarter. we go. And on the matchbook it was this one. Wait. Okay, so I just have to figure out the the symbols, maybe? Let's look at the uh, table of elements here. I don't even know what it's supposed to start with, though. The elements tell the order. The letter and digit tell the direction. Answer to my fate lies in the box. Okay. I'm 
problem is I don't know where to start there. Yeah, I got that. Does it have to be any, I mean, obviously it has to be a particular order. Congratulations on your purchase of the state-of-the-art Dynaham Model 2000. We at Kramer Com know you will enjoy your new communication device for years and years. Below are some helpful pieces of information for both your safety and convenience. And remember, if it's if it isn't Kramer Com, it's asymptotic. <laughs> Wonderful world of ham radio. Your new Dynaham Model 2000 lets you listen in on parts of the world you never knew existed and interact with friends from faraway lands. The Space Age digital keypad allows you to enter four digital frequency or channel. You can then either listen to the activity on the channel or use the Dynaham Morse code keyword to transmit a message. Please consult local, state, federal, and international laws on appropriate and legal usage. Receiving. To enter a frequency or channel number, simply enter a four-digit number on the numeric keypad and press the connect button. Transmitting. All messages are sent using Morse code. See appendix. One letter at a time. Compose each letter by pressing either a dot or a dash button on the Morse code keyboard. When you have finished composing a letter, press send. The less than button erases the series of dots and dashes that have been entered prior to hitting the send button. If you realize you have made a mistake after hitting the send button one or more times, pushing the less than less than button, rewind button will send and ignore previous message signal. If you have transmitted an unrecognizable letter, a transmission error sound will play. Good maintenance techniques will extend the life of your Dynaham 2000 model. Avoid exposure to liquid solvents, bodily fluids, and caustic chemicals. If the main radio tube has expired, it can be replaced with any standard radio tube. Caution. Avoid placing fingers or foreign objects into the main radio tube holding socket. Electrical shock can result. Oh, let's take a picture of this just in case. All right, so there's the alphabet, and it looks like that's it. Okay. Can I not go back here and read any of these books? No, no works of fiction for me. There we go. I don't think we read anything on this side, did we? Maybe we did. We did not. Werewolves. Since ancient times, the cunning savagery of wolves has both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat to livestock and allegedly to small children and lone travelers, Legends as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves, where means man, and the transformation came to be known as 
lycanthropy. What the symptoms of lycanthropy? Lycanthropy? Descriptions of werewolves and of the transformation process itself have varied greatly throughout the ages. Some lycanthropes assumed the precise appearance of a wolf, others turned into something that was half human, half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent, sometimes lycanthropes could change form at will. Sometimes environmental factors brought about the transformation. The symptoms and duration of a werewolf's condition depended entirely upon the curse that initiated that particular case of lycanthropy. In general, victims who were destined to alter their form permanently usually appeared pale. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, a dry tongue, and constant thirst. These symptoms usually accompanied or were soon followed by hair growth, especially on the face and hands, fingernails grew long, and the eyes gradually changed shape and color. Now we just turned into a graphic novel. The victim's personality also changed. He or she became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went into hiding, returning to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary victims who could change their appearance at will or who were involuntarily transformed by the sound of a wolf's nocturnal howl or by a full moon, lycanthropic symptoms occurred not over time but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume human form again at sunrise either by shedding their hair, claws, and fangs or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact. Such a lycanthrope would reportedly suffer the same fate as its shed skin. If it was found and destroyed, the werewolf would likewise be destroyed. According to legend, those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained the ability to change their form through sorcery, and voluntary lycanthropes were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged or had been bitten by or born to a werewolf. Since there was no cure, and since most werewolves were thought to be immortal, these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart that they could only be destroyed by a silver bullet is a modern embellishment. Why? The, the reasons for lycanthropy. Psychology plays a significant role in lycanthropy. Wanting to imitate, if not actually become, the thing or person that one fears the most seems to be part of human nature. Far from being a universal phenomenon, werewolves are unknown in regions where there are no wolves. Instead, people spread tales of were bears or were tigers or were crocodiles, whichever animal is most feared. The old saying, if you can't beat them, join them, goes a long way in explaining the source and longevity of many monster legends. More important, throughout history, there have been instances of people who actually were werewolves, in their own minds at least, convinced that they had been cursed. They presented all the physical symptoms of lycanthropy and often behaved violently because they fully believed that they had become werewolves, they acted like werewolves. As a result, the people around them treated them like werewolves, which only reinforced their delusion, thus trapping them in a vicious circle. This psychological disorder was no doubt prevalent in the Middle Ages, when belief in sorcery, curses, and creatures such as werewolves was commonplace. The power of suggestion cannot be underestimated, especially in places where education is minimal and superstition passes for truth. Instances of lycanthropic disorder are rare in modern times, although it is possible that many cases go unreported due to misdiagnosis or famili familial embarrassment. For research psychologists such as myself, information gathering is a never-ending process. If you believe you know someone who has undergone lycanthropic metamorphosis, please contact me. Okay, that was something. Anything else in here we can read? I love going to the library. It's one of my favorite places. What is a relic? Throughout the ages, the remains and intimate possessions of religious figures have been recovered, preserved, and venerated by their followers. Such items, known as relics, are particularly important in Catholicism. After Constantine facilitated the embellishment of Christianity, 
as the predominant religion of the Roman Empire in AD 312, consecrating new churches by securing and sometimes displaying the relics of saints became standard practice. Over the centuries, as cathedrals and basilicas were built and rebuilt across Europe, the relics associated with them often dictated their political as well as spiritual importance. Relics were kept in a cavity inside the altar sepulcher of a church or in a container reliquary, or more often were simply buried so they would become literally and figuratively part of the church's foundation. Often a relic consisted of partial remains, sometimes a single finger or a lock of hair. Sometimes it was an item a saint had habitually worn or touched, clothes, jewelry, even dishware. It was, and still is, not uncommon for the relics of a single saint to be in several different churches on several different continents. The bodies of some saints seemed miraculously immune to decomposition. These incorruptibles can still be seen in churches throughout Europe, lying in state in glass sepulchers. Their natural appearance belying the fact that they died centuries earlier. What follows is a survey of the relics that can be found in modern day, day Venice. About some of them, much is known. About most of them, little is known. The history of many of them is a frustrating mishmash of fact and fancy. But none of the relics ended up where they are by accident. Someone, sometime, believed they were sacred and went to great lengths to preserve them against the unrelenting onslaught of time and human forgetfulness. The relics of St. Mark. Not surprisingly, the remains of St. Mark the Evangelist are buried in St. Mark's Basilica. Famous for writing the earliest of the four Gospels of the New Testament, Mark spread the Gospel as well, traveling great distances to preach, eventually founding a church in Alexandria, Egypt. When he died, his remains were enshrined at the church he had founded. The city of Venice at that time did not exist. But by 828, Venice not only existed, it was looking for a way to demonstrate its independence from both Rome and Byzantium, and to be recognized as the major commercial and cultural center, center it was well on its way to becoming. Consequently, a group of Venetian merchants obtained the body of St. Mark moving, translating it from Alexandria to the chapel of the Doge the secular ruler of Venice. Some accounts say the merchants purchased the remains, but it's far more likely they stole them. The city rationalized its actions by recounting a story in which St. Mark, while sailing to a town nearby, was forced to wait out a storm in the lagoon, which would later give rise to Venice. An angel reportedly appeared to him and said, be at peace here, as in, don't be afraid of the storm. The Venetians, however, claimed the angel meant rest here, as in be buried and rest eternally here. In honor of his city's new patron saint, the Doge rebuilt and expanded his chapel, which eventually became the Grand Basilica it is today, and the city of Venice basked in its newfound status as the guardian and protector of one of the greatest figures in the history of Christianity, the relics of St. Theodore. Two tall columns built in the 12th century flank the Piazzetta of the Piazza San Marco. Atop one is a winged lion, symbol of St. Mark the Evangelist. Atop the other is a man standing on a crocodile, symbol of Egypt. This is St. Theodore of Am Amasia, the original patron saint of Venice. As Christianity spread throughout Europe, in the Middle East following the Edict of Constantine, it was common for cities to obtain the relics of a particular saint, then dedicate the city to their protection. In return, that saint would guard the city. For their patron saint, the, the Byzantine officials who founded Venice chose St. Theodore, a young soldier who was martyred for his Christian beliefs in 83 or 6, in Amasia, a city in what is now Turkey. By the 9th century, however, Venetian officials considered Theodore to be an Eastern saint, one more closely associated with Byzantium than Rome, and lacking in star power. So when St. Mark's relics were translated to Venice in 828, the relics of St. Theodore were quietly removed from the Doge's chapel and forgotten. His body is said to have been translated to the church, which bears his name in Constantinople, while his head is in Gieta, Italy. But it is unclear whether these are the same relics that were once enshrined in Venice. The Chalice of St. 
Gervais, Gervais, <laughs> Gervais and his twin brother Protes were the sons of two Christian martyrs in Milan. They too were martyred for their faith, probably when Marcus Aurelius was the Roman emperor. 161 to 180. Little else is known about their lives. It is, it is the way in which their relics were discovered that made them truly remarkable. In 386, Saint Ambrose needed relics in order to consecrate his new basilica in Milan. Heeding what he had seen in a dream, he started digging in a cemetery outside outside the city, and there found the remains of Saint Gervais and Saint Protase. The relics were moved to his basilica and buried there, and the twins became the patron, became the patron saints of Milan. But the story wasn't over. In the grave with Saint Gervais was the cup he and his brother had presumably shared while growing up. Undoubtedly placed in the grave by a friend or relative, the cup was quite plain, most likely made of tin, with the letter P awkwardly scratched into the metal on one side and the letter G on the other. At least that's what the cup looked like when it was removed from the grave. Legend has it that upon exposure to the sun, the cup was miraculously transformed into a majestic solid gold jewel encrusted chalice. The twins initials were still on it, only now they were precisely drawn patterns of gleaming precious stones. There is no record that the chalice of St. Gervais was ever placed on display in the Basilica St. Ambrosio in Milan, which means it was either given away or more likely stolen soon after its discovery. More than a thousand years later, the chalice surfaced in, in, in Assisi when it was used to pay off a debt. It eventually fell into the hands of a priest who realized what it was and in 1708 presented it to the covenant of St. Gervais in Venice. For 300 years, the nuns there have watched over their beloved relic while the convent is closed to the public. It's possible, though extremely difficult, for people who have a who have a demonstrable interest in art or history to arrange for a private viewing of the chalice. All right, let's go up to the next one. Next level. Top shelf this time. Whoa. <laughs> Introduction to Ichido. Ichido is an ancient, extremely simple yet highly effective form of hand to hand combat, although it is in truth nothing more than a repertoire of nine distinct, precisely delivered offensive blows. Ichido can, when executed by a master, vanquish a foe in seconds. Ichido has never enjoyed great popularity, largely because the Ichi practitioner is required to proceed each move with a specific verbal salute or chi cry. Once an adversary learns which chi cry precedes what blow, he of course can respond to each chi cry with the appropriate block and thus defend himself indefinitely. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Ichido is still learned and practiced with great enthusiasm by people with a passion for power and a taste for novelty. Attack stance. Hands forward, raise to chest level, fists clench. Always return to this position after delivering a blow. Up left attack. A reigning open hand chop striking the opponent's upper left side. Chi cry. Hussa. Up right attack. A reigning open hand chop striking the opponent's upper right side. Chi cry. <laughs> okay. Up center attack. Arm and wrist are bent like a flamingo, with fingers forming a point or beak. The attack is a quick jab or poke to the face. Chi cry, essa, essa. Mid left attack, left side close fist punch, knuckles are up. Ika. Mid right attack, right side close fist punch, knuckles are up. <laughs> Mid center attack, open handed palm attack to the chest. Shira. Low left attack. Lower left closed fist kidney punch. Knuckles are turned down. Kila. Low right attack. Lower right closed fist kidney punch. Knuckles are turned down. Shaza. Low center attack. Signature attack. Both arms are pulled back and then open hand palm strike with both hands to the opponent's stomach. Shita. 
Oh, that's hilarious. I need to try that tomorrow. Don't know who I'm gonna try it on, but I'm gonna find somebody. Gemstones and how to identify them by Rexford Millhouse. Gemstones include any number of crystalline rocks, which when cut and polished can be used as jewelry. Their commercial value usually depends on how rare they are, although beauty is certainly a factor as well. Because gemstones are more often than not found by accident, it behooves miners, prospectors, and even farmers to be able to recognize them for the earth holds many natural treasures, but only for those who know what to look for. This is very hard to read. Quartz is one of the most abundant minerals on earth. Crystalline quartz is a composite of six-sided prisms which have grown together in a process called twinning. Sometimes the crystals grow at right angles to each other, but soar, but more frequently two crystals grow from a common prism face or several crystals grow into each other so that the corner of one penetrates the other, penetrates the face of another. Amethyst is crystalline quartz that is a lilac to deep purple in color. The deeper the color, the more valuable it is. Citrine, a form of quartz that is a rich golden color, it's closer, closely related to amethyst. In fact, if amethyst is heated to five, 550 degrees centigrade, it becomes citrine. For the heat, eliminates the impurity that causes its purple coloration. Tiger's eye is a fibrous type of crystalline quartz in which thin yellowish and reddish brown bands are apparent when light reflects off its polished surface. Diamond is pure carbon and is formed deep in the mantle or the of the earth where extreme temperatures more than a thousand degrees centigrade and extreme pressure 50,000 times greater than on the earth's surface make its crystal extremely compact and strongly bonded, hence diamonds well-known hardness. Due to their hardness, low quality diamonds may have many industrial uses such as for grinding wheels and drill bits. Magna brings diamond crystals to the earth's surface along with other rocks from the mantle. These kimberlite pipes often contain olivine peridot garnet and zircon as well as diamond. This is very difficult to read. <laughs> it's, it's not very clear at all. When gem hunters spot any of the indicator minerals pictured below, they would do well to search the surrounding area for diamond crystals. Tourmaline comes in so many colors that it probably has at one time or another been confused with all the other stones in this book. However, Tourmaline crystals are deeply and distinctively striated, grooved, prismatic, and triangular in cross-section. The most common color is black, but some tour tourmaline crystals are multicolored, such as watermelon tourmaline, which is pink on the inside and green on the outside. Beryl is a very diverse mineral with several gemstone varieties. Common beryl is an opaque milky green while its rare gem varieties are transparent. All varieties form long hexagonal prismatic crystals which are similar to tourmaline crystals but lack tourmaline's characteristic striations. Aqua marine is the blue green to deep blue variety of beryl. While most gemstones form relatively small crystals, aqua marine has been known to form crystals weighing more than 100 pounds, although such specimens are rare. Geez, 100 pounds, that's crazy. Emerald is a deep green variety of beryl which gets its color from trace amounts of chromium. Emerald gemstones tend to contain extraneous matter. Indeed, the source of a stone can sometimes be pinpointed by, ex by examining its impurities or inclusions. Garnet is a relatively common gemstone because garnets are oft often appear in their host rocks as almost perfectly faceted crystals. They have attracted human attention for centuries. 
Unlike other gemstones, garnet forms relatively spherical crystals that are generally reddish in color and look somewhat like pomegranate seeds. Pyrope garnet crystals are deep red. They form in the Earth's mantle and are brought to the Earth's surface in much the same way as diamond crystals. Therefore, finding pyrope increases the likelihood, but doesn't guarantee, that diamond can be found in the vicinity. Peridot is the most well-known form of olivine. It is bright apple green crystals. Its bright apple green crystals are thick and vertically striated with wedge-shaped terminations and an oily luster. Most peridot is found amid basaltic rocks which have been brought to the Earth's surface by lava. Corundum or aluminum oxide is second in hardness only to a diamond and as a component of the black magnetic rock known as emery has been mined and used for thousands of years as an abrasive. Its crystals are commonly six-sided and barrel, sh and barrel shaped with tapering ends and are when pure colorless. Rubies are one of the two gem varieties of Corundum. Rubies are deep red and are formed when chromium substitutes for aluminum as corundum crystallizes. Rubies is my gemstone. I was born in July. Sapphires include all the other color variations of gen corundum and may be pink, yellow, green, blue, or colorless depending on which transitional elements such as iron and titanium influence the crystallization process. However, Cornflower blue sapphires are by far the most sought after. Zircon that is gemstone quality rivals diamond in its beauty and brilliance, although not in hardness. Zircon crystals are typically prismatic with pyramidal ends and are usually found as single specimens. They may be suspended in rock or because they are dense and durable, small grain-like crystals are often found in beach placer deposits. Natural gemstones are usually reddish brown, but when subjected to heat, they turn yellow, colorless, or blue. Whew, that was a mouthful. Is that it? Oh, I want to read more. Oh, man. Can't go to the information desk. Hmm. Um, let me. Let me write all these down. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna write write all this stuff down. H E up to X E write three. And that's it. Okay. So then Probably the order that we put them in in the puzzle is by the number, two, three, four, five. So AG is non-existent. Here it is, 47. All right, so give me a second to go through this now and put all of the numbers in here. 17. Okay, so I think I got it. So this one started here, then we go up to right one. 
left three, one, two, three, down two, right one, down one, left two, no, am I missing one? I'm missing one somewhere, aren't I? How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Eighteen with this one. You know what? Maybe we can just figure it out here. Um. So there's something between left two. So it either has to be up or it has to be over. We left two and then down three. So Here we go. One, two, three. Right four. One, two, three, four. Down one. Left one, two, three. Up two. One, two, three. Up two. Left one. Down two. One, two, three. There we go. All right, so then I just need to go back uh, and look at this video now. Check in here again. And this one. What you got, Jake? This is the story of a student council president gone terribly bad. Hmm. Let's take a look at what kind of homework he's bringing home from Daddy's top secret military industrial aerospace factory. But what does Daryl do with this stuff? He's too stupid to really know what it all means. But he's not too stupid to know how much these industrial secrets are worth. Yeah. You see, Daryl's selling out to our local air conditioning guy, Mitch Dillon. Not sure what a guy specializing in HVAC does with satellite schematics, telemetry encodings, and signature intelligence, but I'm sure whatever it is, it's not exactly legal. But it's probably worth a lot of money to Mitch to keep it quiet. Breaking news, check it out. I found out who Mitch is selling Daryl's secrets to. Who? This dude. Can no way, imagine? Uncle Steve? This dorkoid is the ringleader of some kind of clearinghouse for military secrets. And Mr. Clueless just forgot his journal full of important notes like contact numbers, system passwords, project code names, amounts paid, etc., etc. And some other stuff I don't understand. But I can tell that this guy will pay top dollar to get it back. But just in case, should anything happen to me, I'm putting the journal in a safe place. I taped it underneath one of the book carts at the school, but I oh. doubt it'll give me much trouble. Just a ton of cash. So if you find this video, come look me up. I'll probably be long gone from Paseo del Mar and tanning my bod on my very own private island, retired at 17. Jake. Aunt Eloise? Uh -oh. Is that you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, who is it?
Nobody's here. Uh, is Nancy Drew gonna jump scare me? <gasps> Detective yep. Beach, I didn't expect you. I just thought I'd come by and see how you're doing. You seemed kind of in a hurry. Did you find the journal? Yes, I found your journal. Oh. Uh, Jake's journal. I found Jake's journal. Nancy. No, you said my journal. You said that you found my journal. Oh. Why don't we step into the living room and have a nice chat about where my journal is, hmm? Oh, and why don't you give me your cell phone? I'd hate to be interrupted during our little tete-a-tete. -tete. So, this <laughs> Detective Beach, an undercover assignment, was just a ruse to get me to find your journal. You killed Jake, didn't you? Yes, I did con you into this undercover charade, and you just ate it up. I mean, you had the lingo, the self-important attitude. You're a real Snoopy Susie, aren't you? I but solved the case. as far as murder goes, no. Yeah. That was my former partner, Mitch Dillon. But stop with this delaying tactic, Detective Nancy. Where's my journal? Hmm. It's in the entrance, in the sofa, under the rose paintings. Let me in. Why me? Why did you choose me to go undercover? You fit the bill. You're a teenager, you're new in town, and you're an amateur detective. I overheard your aunt talking about you at the diner and came up with the whole undercover idea. It's not in here. <sighs> I'm going to give you another chance. Tell me where my journal is. Can I not it's run out entrance, while he's looking? In the credenza drawer. So, did Jake try to blackmail you after he found your journal at the diner? Excellent deduction, my dear Drew. That's why I sent Mitch after Jake, to rough him up a bit. Unfortunately for Jake and Mitch, the roughing up got a bit Why are we just standing me. here? No journal. I've been a very patient man, and I need my journal. Tell me where it is. <sighs> it's behind the mirror. <laughs> Who are you exactly if you're not a detective? Just a businessman, albeit an unconventional one. A businessman who deals in top secret information that certain governments and other parties are interested in. No journal, Nancy. You've tried my patience long enough. You leave me no choice but to find the journal on my own. No! Ah! Ouch. What am I supposed to do there? But stop I tried I tried to run out. Nancy, where's my journal? It's in the entrance behind the mirror. So like Who where, are where, you exactly where do I go? If you're not a detective. Just a businessman, albeit an unconventional one. A businessman who deals in top secret information that certain governments and other parties are interested in. No journal, Nancy. I'm going to give you another chance. Tell me where my journal is. It's in the entrance behind the tapestry. What's the combination? Hmm. Sigma Phi Kappa Delta. It's not in here, and I'm tired of these tricks you're playing. Where's my journal? <sighs> You've tried my patience long enough. You leave me no choice but to find the journal on my own. No. Ah! Hmm. Hmm. Let's stop with this delaying tactic, Detective Nancy. Where's my journal? It's in the entrance behind the tapestry. What's the combination? Delta, 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 Delta. 
Oh, wrong. That's not it, Nancy. Kappa Lambda Kappa Sigma. You're trying my patience, Detective Drew. What's the combination? Zeta Moo Moo Pi. <laughs> moo Moo Pi. Hey, what the? Get me out of here, Nancy Drew. What? I'm sure the police will be happy to transfer you to another set of bars. So long, Detective. What do you do with this gun? Hello, prisoner number four three two one A. Dear Dad, case closed. Yay! Mitch Dillon and his boss, formerly known as Detective Beach, are on their way to prison. The police still don't know his real identity, but his trade and top secret information has been stopped thanks to Aunt Eloise's burglar proof safe. <laughs> Daryl has confessed to selling information about his father's military projects. Despite the damage this has caused Gray Enterprises, Daryl's father has forgiven him. Wow. Connie returned her trophy, but the judo club refused to take it and is opening their competitions to women next year. Hulk agreed to pay for the damages to the pharmacy, and Hal has gotten his scholarships. And I'm headed to the beach, where the only cover I'm going to go under is a beach blanket. See you <laughs> soon, Nancy. Yay, we finally did it. Oh, let's see. I don't even remember. Corn dogs. I don't know. Secrets can kill awards. Ned Defender rebuffing each amorous attempt by Daryl. Yeah, there was one where we didn't say anything. Easter egg confidential. Pop prankster grape grape orange cool. I didn't get that one. Barnacle for reaching the last level of Barnacle Blast. Burp for your love of soft drinks. I wonder how many soft drinks you have to get to drink to do that. I got two. Money Grubber for finding all those shiny quarters. Oh, so I, I thought that was like for hints or something, but that's actually because there were several that I just passed over because I had plenty of quarters. Jukebox jiving for playing every song. Cue for following up on every lead. Jacques for confronting all those Weasley suspects. All right, to the credits. I've always wanted to visit Japan, from the exotic food and wild fashion in the cities to the nature and tradition in the smaller towns. I know there's going to be a ton to see and do. As a thank you for all of my hard detective work, P.G. Krollmeister has reserved a room for me at one of the area's best ryokans, or traditional inns. It'll be nice to finally take a break from solving mysteries and to spend a few weeks without danger and dark secrets hiding around every corner. I've already heard that the ryokan I'm staying in has quite a reputation. I'm not sure exactly for what, though. Well, I'll find that out soon enough. Ah! Nancy. Join me in my next adventure, Shadow at the Water's Edge. That's cool. I like how they did a, a little preview of the next one. Or the one that they're working on anyway. That's that's pretty cool.
All right, we did it. This is like getting ready to start a new, a new series here. Stay tuned for dangers, case number two. This is the next one that we have to play. Not only did a real live TV actress call me in on this case, but I got to go to New York City and hang out on the set of a daytime TV show. Someone had been sending it star Rick Arden death threats and weird gifts. It was my job to find out who and why. As if living in the Big Apple wasn't exciting enough, I got to mingle with actors, agents, producers. I even saved Rick Arlen's life. Of course, I had to save my own life once or twice, too. Show business is definitely not for the faint of heart. Now, this will be the next one that we do. I'm not sure when we'll come back to that one, but we will definitely be coming back to it soon. Like I said, there's somewhere between like 35 and 40 of these games out right now. So we've definitely got some content here that we can put, put together, put out. Anyhow, this was really fun for my first Nancy Drew game, and especially this being an older game. Of course, this is a remastered version, but it's still an older, older game, a game from the 90s. I really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Maybe I could go up to doing the, um, not the junior detective, but the, maybe the senior detective mode next time. Especially now that I kind of know what I'm looking for, some of the achievements that we can get. But I had a great time playing this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thanks so much for hanging around. I appreciate it. You guys are the absolute best. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Either way, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. Mm -hmm.